It's a big pleasure to have uh, here with us today for this Connecting Adults webinar, Nuno Alves and uh, uh, Andrea Banfi that will be uh, moderating the conversation with him. Uh, as some other students know already, Andrea is a teacher of the Mus Academy and a strategist, while Nuno, uh, he's a, a former student of the Mus Academy. He studied in the Mus Academy some years ago. <laughs> and uh, um, after the studies and uh, in Domus, uh, he continued their career path and professional path in different companies as a design director. And uh, um, I leave the word to you, Nuno, to, and to Andrea to go uh, to disclose to the student what you are doing now. As you were mentioning, uh, you were before based in Singapore, but now at the moment you are based in, uh, in Switzerland, in Zurich. And so, Andrea, no, no, I leave the word to you. The stage is yours. I'm here, and I hope that all the students can uh, uh, enjoy the webinar, the conversation with you. Guys, in case you have any questions, comments for Nuno and Andrea, feel free to raise your hands, write in the chat, uh, and ask any possible question or comments to our uh, attend to our in, uh, former student Nuno and uh, to Andrea as well. So, Andrea, a little word to you. Grazie, Cecilia. <laughs> Ciao, everyone. I think we have a pretty big uh, group, so I'm happy to be on board of this uh, Domus Academy adventure. I have to make my coming out before we start. It's my first moderation with Connecting the Dots, so I'll do my best to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Cecilia, for introducing me, and uh, ciao, Nuno, and nice to have you here with uh, us. Uh, it's going to be a possibility, an opportunity to, to travel together, so to connect some dots and to, uh, to share your experiences uh, to, to make them like um, available and uh, an opportunity for the people that are listening to grow uh, or to question themselves a little bit. Um, when we met the first time, uh, you shared with me uh, some interesting stories. Um, and I would like to start uh, asking you if you would like to introduce yourself. So who is Nuno <laughs> and uh, what, what what is the path that brought you today to Switzerland? <laughs> Thank you very much, Andre. It's, 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 it's a pleasure. Uh, Nuno. Nuno is a Portuguese guy uh, that was born in uh, Lisbon. I was raised in Lisbon. I studied in Lisbon. I got married in Lisbon. I got my two beautiful uh, daughters in Lisbon. And... Um, I, I was I was a little bit bored of being so such a, a Lisbon person, such a Portuguese person that uh, maybe life uh, uh, got in charge to take me some some other places. And it's it's been an amazing journey, and I hope I can share that journey with you. Because design, if it wasn't for design, if it wasn't for Domus Academy, I wouldn't be here. So let me just tell you this very clearly and upfront: Nuno would not be here talking to you would not be in Switzerland, have not been lived in so many other countries if it wasn't for Domus Academy. The Domus Academy experience for me was absolutely transformative. And uh, my mind and my career got to a place that would not be possible without this experience. So you, uh, everyone that is listening to me today, I hope you can appreciate the, the, um, the opportunity to study in such an institution because I hope that you will uh, enjoy the same experience that I had um, after uh, have, uh, studying at, at Dogmouth Academy. So having said that, let me go back to uh, how I started my career. So I started in Lisbon uh, as a uh, junior designer in the design agencies, working late nights, uh, starting really early as, as any uh, trainee. And um, it was an, an amazing experience and an opportunity. 
And then I did all the things that you are supposed to be doing in your uh, in the beginning of your career. And then I got a little bit bored and I thought, oh, maybe there's more than this. And I decided to stop. And that's when I decided to go back to school. And that's when I found Domus Academy. So nobody paid for my uh, fees, my traveling, my stays. I paid everything out of my pocket. And to tell you the truth, it was the best um, way to spend my money studying at Domus Academy. So when I came back to Portugal after studying at Domus Academy, I was not the same Nuno. I was a completely different person. I, my horizons have uh, opened up in a way that I, would, I could not go back in the same way. So I, I came back to Portugal and I started to progress in my career a lot faster. So I started to work as a freelancer. I did, have not go back to design agencies. So I started to work as a freelancer. And then little by little, uh, I was getting a lot of success, a lot of recurring clients. And all of a sudden, when I look around me, I had a, a boutique design agency uh, and people working for me and a team and a lot of responsibilities. And everything worked really well for 16 years. And after 16 years, I was, everybody, you, you, you probably know this, uh, the recession that we ha had in Europe was really, really hard, really, really uh, punishing. And uh, everybody was suffering a lot. And Portugal, Spain, Ireland, you guys in Italy and um, in, in Greece also, we were suffering a lot. So I had to make a decision if I would stay or should I go. And um, I, wanted, I always wanted to have an uh, international career. So I decided, okay, let me try and let, let me go somewhere else. So I started to apply to other countries, other um, companies. And um, the first opportunity that I got was uh, to work in Dubai. Dubai is an amazing place. It's a place where I've grown yet again so much in such a short period of time because I was exposed to project that I would never imagine if I would stay back. I worked for the Central Bank uh, of Saudi Arabia. I did the signage and wayfinding for the entire uh, transport system in Mecca City. I would never have that opportunity if I would stay back in Portugal. So yes, I, I had to go out of my comfort zone. It was very hard to leave my family behind and venture into a different place uh, where I knew absolutely no one. I didn't know the language, uh, but I, I just uh, threw myself out, out of uh, out to the elements and I, I was able to thrive. I was able to get the opportunities that I wanted and that I needed to grow. And uh, after two and a half years of Dubai, um, I got invited to visit Singapore and I fell in love with Singapore. Singapore, if you haven't been, I highly recommend it because going to Singapore is like uh, going into the future, uh, literally and mentally. Literally, because we are in terms of time zone, we are ahead of you guys. So <laughs> actually, we are in the future, a little bit, a few hours ahead of you. But it's, it's a, an amazing uh, country. It's an amazing uh, culture with a lot of uh, people from all over the world. And uh, you will learn about, you will learn and you will be welcomed. Uh, people will uh, be able to expose you to different uh, mentalities, different ways to see the world. And it, they will also provide you the opportunities to be a designer in a way that you probably would not be able to if you'd stay back uh, in your uh, home uh, countries. So taking those opportunities, uh, getting out of our comfort zones, uh, it's really important and um, meeting other people, meeting other, working with other uh, industries is actually fulfilling the purpose of being a designer. And let me say this also very clearly. Um, when I'm uh, invited to talk to students like yourselves today, I often start my conversation by saying there has never been a better time to be a designer and in coming into the creative industry like today. When I started, especially in Portugal, being a small country, there was a lot of uh, confusion, a lot of doubts about what design was, what was the role of the, the, the designer. Um, but today, you that you, you are coming to this industry at this time, you don't have to explain to anyone what a designer is, what, what's the purpose of design and what, what, uh, 
you need what you can do for society and for companies and brands. So you, in a way, you are very fortunate. So please um, take that opportunity and make sure that you wake up and um, embrace those opportunities. Don't shy away from, from them. And um, I worked on the agency sites. I worked in small agencies, big agencies, not well-known agencies, some famous ones. So I was exposed to a lot of industries from aviation, uh, F, uh, food and beverage, uh, hospitality, um, so many, so many different ag- industries. My previous company before I joined uh, my current company was Coca-Cola because um, at some point, big companies like these, they understand the, the power and the, the purpose of design. So they want to bring the, the best knowledge and the best expertise in-house because this will not substitute the agencies. We still work with agencies. We still want to see and have the uh, visibility of what's out there, but we also want to have the expertise in-house to be able to uh, propel and uh, accelerate some uh, key projects. So I worked for Coca-Cola for five years and I exited. And now I'm, I've joined very recently. This is my fourth week at RBI, Restaurant Brand International. Uh, we run four big restaurant uh, um, brands. So Burger King, Popeyes, Tim Hortons, and Firehouse Subs. Again, it's a very different co- uh, industry. But again, it's a, it's a big opportunity for me to, to learn and to grow. Again, coming out of my comfort zone and making sure that uh, I'm useful and design plays a, a role in uh, the decisions that the company makes. And I want to be an influencer. I want to be able to uh, help people make informed decisions. Uh, and design has a, a big role and a big um, importance in, 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 in this. And that's a little bit about me. Uh, in a nutshell, I don't know where I will be next. So just to clarify, I'm not based in Singapore. I'm uh, in, in Switzerland. I'm based in Singapore. But my role is a global role, which means that I need to oversee and I, I need to uh, nurture and uh, elevate the, um, the brands that we have all over the world. It doesn't mean that if you're in a location, you're stuck to that. You can actually find roles where you have a, a global reach and um, it's, a, it's a very, very uh, rich um, experience. And thank you for breaking the ice and walking us through this um, very, very powerful and interesting adventure. Uh, I wrote down some words that um, you uh, sent to me through your stories, but one is this idea of uh, commitment. Okay, you you mentioned the fact that um, it didn't happen by chance, uh, but you were like engaged by every single challenge and also by the learning opportunities. The second one is transformation. So this idea of the world is changing. Let's see it as a possibility. Uh, and last but not least, this idea of taking the opportunities and being a designer. I love your sentence when you say there's, there's, there has never been a better time to be a designer. Can you elaborate on this? Can you tell us more about why do you think it's it's cool, key, important to be a designer? Thank you very much. Look, let, let me tell you, a, I don't know if, if it's funny or a stupid story, but um, it's a real story. When I went for my interview to, uh, to do my... Uh, army or national service when I was uh, 18 years old or 16, something like that, it's been a long time. They asked me, what do you do? Designer. And they said, oh, okay, you know how to take care of horses. No, 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 no. That's not what I do. I don't take care of horses. I I do design. So back then, I I had to explain what a designer is, what is the purpose and the role of design. These days, nobody has to do it. Nobody... (laughs) has to go through that and additionally um, there's so many opportunities there there's so many open doors for designers there's so many opportunities to have a voice there's so many opportunities to change the world we there aren't many uh, professions or activities or um, roles that have this uh, opportunity to change the world 
As designers, I believe we have the opportunity and we have the duty to change the world. What I'm doing here today, uh, I, I, it, it's not changing the world, but I hope it can improve your lives a little bit. Because when I was a student, and I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll, you'll emphasize with this, there's a lot of doubt. What will I do? Will I find a job? Will I uh, starve? Will I have to live under a bridge? Don't worry about that. Uh, as a designer, there will be no lack of opportunities and no lack of problems to solve and ways for you to have a meaningful and positive impact on companies, on your countries, on society. You just have to pick and choose what are the ones that you want to, to focus your passion and, and your time. Being a designer and being passionate about what we do is a blessing, but it's also a curse. It's a blessing because, again, uh, we have this uh, tremendous opportunity, but it's a curse because we go to bed and we are thinking about design. We wake up and we are thinking about design. So it is what it is. Um, we, you, <laughs> there's no way around it, but it's a, an amazing journey. My journey has been amazing. It's been amazing due to Domus Academy, and I would. It's been hard. Can you imagine going away from your country to some other country where you've never been before, having to leave your family behind? You don't know what's going to happen. You just have a few uh, dollars in your pocket and uh, you don't know anyone. But uh, design is a problem-solving tool. And you can use that to other people's uh, problems and you can use it for yourself. So you just need to embrace it. Uh, relax and uh, be confident that uh, design is a great choice to, and it's a, a great decision and you need to embrace it fully. Thank you very much. It, it sounds like um, a, a big horizon or a wide horizon that uh, every designer can have. And I, I love the, the link between obsession and opportunity, okay? <laughs> There's always a, a dark side behind the opportunity or the passion that is the, the obsession or the, the complete involvement, also the, um, the opportunity behind that. Um, something else came into my mind and is the, um, usually we have been trained to be super vertical, like to, to be super expert in one area and then all the others are not that important. And I, from your point of view, it sounds like designer is, is very wide, uh, is very clear as an approach, but very wide when you said I've been exposed to different industries. So um, clever people call it T-shaped. Um, wh what's your position on this? And do you think it's useful? And has it been useful for your approach and different steps in your career? It's, it's a very good point. Uh, I was having a, 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 a meeting this morning and the company, uh, the person that was presenting was a, a exactly explaining this to the marketing team. So it's it's important for the marketing team, but it's also important for, for a designer to have uh, this concept of uh, having a cross um, platform and a cross trained uh, capabilities, but also be able to go in depth into one subject because the world is very diverse. You will never know what briefing, what challenge will um, you will have to face uh, tomorrow, especially on agencies. So you have to have that really wide scope of capabilities and understanding of the world because the world is very complex. It's very different from it while it was 30 years ago when I started my career. And uh, we need to be, in order, in order to be useful, we need to be able to support a wide range of industries, a wide range of uh, problems that need to be solved. But we also need to be able to go deep into a subject that we are experts. We cannot just be someone that has a wider um, scope of work and uh, understanding and experience. Uh, we have to have a mix of both. So. Uh, that's in my case, I, I, it's been super helpful. Um, obviously, the wider your understanding uh, and capabilities, the better, but you also need to be an expert and need to enter a room and be the smartest person in that one sub subject. I'll give you an example. Uh, um, I've, I have done branding 
I've done uh, packaging, uh, shopper marketing. Shopper marketing is a, a place where not many designers know or want to play, but I can assure you there's amazing uh, opportunities uh, to make a difference there. Uh, I've done illustration, I do photography. So having that wide range of capabilities really help because people will value that. People will value when you are able to understand the problem from a different perspective. Now, I, I would like to also say, uh, Andrea, that it's, it's important for designers to, when we come into a room and there's something that needs to be solved, able to connect the dots. And that's one of the things that I really appreciate about the, this conversation. It's, it's beautiful, the branding about connecting the dots. Designers must be people that are able to connect the dots in a way that other professions cannot. Because if you're a scientist, a data scientist, or if you're a marketeer, the chances are there are experts in sub, just one subject. But designers, they are able to uh, have a broader perspective and bring a different way of looking into problems and offer a different way of solving um, problems in a way that uh, other, others cannot. And that's a big advantage that we have. That's why it's important to have that uh, T-shaped um, mentality. So we go wide in our capabilities. Because we are also able to go very deep and very um, precise in our expertise. Thank you for sharing your behind the scene of today's uh, meeting, <laughs> because uh, I, I, I always um, like when you learn from different situations. Now you, you, you get inputs or maybe you find solutions from different problems uh, and they are not the problems that you are trying to solve at the moment, but they give you uh, inspiration. Um, in uh, in your experience, uh, so since learning seems to be or exploring and keep ourselves updated seems to be one of the main ingredient of the success or of the even happiness of a designer. Um, what would you suggest to a person that is like a student? So it's a person that is fully dedicated to learning. What are the um, uh, tools, uh, the mindsets, uh, the opportunities that can help someone that is dedicating time, energy, and money, as you said, to learn and to transform itself? Very good question, Andrea. Thank you very much. I, I love your question, and I will try to answer from, from my perspective. So um, it's very important to be curious. It's very important to ask questions. It's very important to talk to people from different industries. As a designer, I'm always seeking uh, to understand and to learn from people from other nationalities, other industries. I talk to scientists, I talk to poets, I talk to philosophers, I talk to astronomers, I talk to researchers. Um, and that's a very important uh, thing to do, to nurture your curiosity, because chances are that you will be able to play a role in solving a problem that that particular person or industry needs. And again, coming back to my initial um, um, provocation. Design has that the capability. We have that uh, ability to change and to be a solution and be of purpose and use to other people and to other users. So by nurturing your curiosity, asking questions, and I know that some people are more open, some people are more introvert. Just try, just try, because you will see that um, you will see that people will value you. People will open their eyes, they will open their doors, they will open their arms, they will embrace design, and um, you will be, you will make a lot of people happy, and you will also make yourself happy, because we, we need to have purpose in your life, in our life, and uh, uh, being a designer, it's not the same thing as being a lawyer. I, 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 believe, I, I don't know many lawyers, but um, uh, I think designers have uh, an edge and an advantage into uh, that kind of uh, profession. Our audience just turned three digits, okay? We are 101 at this moment. So I think it's the time for to, to play or the, the risky question, okay? So we, we shared all the happy parts of uh, designer design can make the difference, designers can solve problems, uh, um, opportunities are out there. 
and curiosity as a tool for, for people to, to grow. On the other side, we're living in a world where a person that uh, is born today can live 100 years, but apparently doesn't know the job he or she will do. Uh, or even, even if she's or he is gonna work, because maybe work is not gonna be 100 necessary everywhere and every time. Um, so the, the, the 100, the question in front of 100 people is, <laughs> um, uncertainty is the only certain thing, okay? It's the only key element that will be there and be here. Uh, and COVID or not COVID, uh, uh, pand pandemics or not pandemics will be uh, will always be here. Um, of course, there's no recipe, okay? There's not one recipe that solves everywhere. I mean, if there's a recipe, please share it with us. We are just 100 people, we can make the difference. But if there's no recipe, what are the ingredients in your opinion to, to surf on this uncertainty? Or how do you surf on uncertainty? <laughs> That's a very good question, Andrea. I'm a surfer, so I'm I'm a, and I'm a designer, so I, I, I probably I'll be in a good uh, space to uh, answer this question. And look, uh, when you go surfing, and I hope you will have the experience uh, and the opportunity to surf, it, it's you never know how the ocean will be. You never know if it's well, it's going to be cold, it's going to be hard, it's going to be harsh, it's going to try to kill you. Uh, at any given opportunity, but you try anyway. And the, the beauty of surfing is you work with your adversity. You cannot stop the wave. If you ever start to, if you ever try to stop a wave, it's impossible. Uh, so there's only one way: is to go with the flow, to go and as things happen, as uh, life throws the challenges uh, at you, you need to embrace that uncertainty because that uncertainty. Uh, will take you to places that you probably never imagined. I, I've mentioned this example of uh, the um, uh, having uh, being faced with a recession and having to go away from my country, out of my comfort zone. Look, it was hard. I, I, I came out of my country crying. But to tell you the truth, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here talking to you. Uh, it was the worst thing that could happen, and it was the best thing that could happen. It was super, super hard. Let me tell you something that um, I don't tell many people, but I'm, I'm going to open my heart to you. One day I was walking on the street, and a guy just fell one meter away from me. He decided he had enough. He decided there was no uh, purpose for his life, so he decided to end his, his life, and he fell one meter away from me. And in that moment, I said to myself, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be the guy that will have a purposeful life. I will be the one guy that will be useful to others, to my family and to society. And I want to make sure that I um, embrace adversity and I will make a positive outcome out of uh, whatever negative or adversity that is uh, going around me. And again, as designers, we have that power. Uh, another thing that I can tell you that has been very useful to me, I don't know how much you are uh, familiar with the imposter syndrome. At some point, you will face it. Everybody faces it. And for me, it's been a blessing because I, 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 I usually, I, when I start a project, I'm always terrified because uh, negative thoughts come to my mind. I always think, oh, I cannot make it. Oh my God, how, how, how was I able to convince these people that I could do it when I know that I cannot do it? But I'm telling these lies to myself. And what the positive aspect is, I cannot go anywhere because I, I have thrown myself in this situation. I'm the only one that has an, the ability to get out of it. So in order to make sure that nobody uh, realizes or figures, figures that I'm trying to fool them, I have to work extra hard. And working extra hard and over-delivering has always uh, played in my favor. And um, yeah, the, the, the imposter syndrome for me has been, has been a, um, something that has been positive uh, in my life. Obviously, it's not, not, it's not uh, good, it's very stressful, 
but it, in the end, uh, it, it, I was able to make it in a, in, in a good way and uh, make it uh, work for me. Uh, thank you for the vulnerability, uh, because I think uh, we should never take for granted the idea that people should be, um, can be, can offer their experiences as a tool for everyone to to share or to grow or to nurture their talents. Uh, so thank you also for for um, not uh, lying uh, or not um, avoiding talking about some elements that we all have or sooner or later we all face. And I think we, we should um, um, always be scared more um, for people that do not feel like fear or do not feel ashamed or something because they, they, they could be other, they are super resolved or they are pretty dangerous. Um, and this idea that um, being a surfer doesn't mean you're not gonna go in on the sea, you're not gonna get hurt, you're not gonna get uh, challenges, but you are available to, um, in Italian we say throw the heart on the other part of a wall uh, that is a leap of faith. So it's it's super powerful. Um, maybe you, you read the book, um, Let My People Go Surfing. Uh, the, the founder of Patagonia uh, always has this, uh, this metaphor. So uh, I like the opportunity of um, uh, underlining the positive effect of negative elements and also seeing how work and collaborations, so partnerships, can uh, always be beneficial for uh, everyone, especially as been for, for your experience. So we have one question, grazie, from the audience, and I would like to, to encourage people to, to, to share some thoughts, because uh, Nuno and I are not afraid of talking, but we're happy to listen. And so, um, Omisha wrote, how did we, how did you get this, uh, how did you start getting clients when you first started freelancing? I find the starting point to be very difficult. Um, would love to hear what you think. So the debut part. Some people would say that um, there's a luck play, plays a huge part. I think that um, there's there's a good saying that says that our uh, I'm very lucky, and the harder I work, the luckier I get. So it's always hard work. Don't I don't know. Maybe some people will have a different experience. Maybe they have, come from a different background. I come from a very humble uh, family. My father died when I was really young. I was raised by my mother, that was a cleaning lady, and it was not easy. So I was able to face a lot of uh, resistance, a lot of uh, challenges. So coming to your question, you, you have to keep pushing. You have to uh, knocking at people's doors. I, I became very good at, at uh, asking, you need help. Can I help? Can I do this for you? Oh, I saw your leaflet. Uh, I can do something better for you. I, I saw your logo. I can... Today, you have so many more opportunities, so many more bigger and larger avenues to start um, getting clients. Uh, obviously, you will never start, unless you're very lucky, to get to, to do the next uh, Nike logo. That will come. You will have those opportunities. But the good thing that I... Maybe if I have a recipe for you that I can give you from my experiences, I, I have, I run my agency for 16 years. I had clients like Unilever, Kraft Foods, uh, Coca-Cola, Procter and Gamble, all of those big clients. And I was a big, a very small company with very few people. We were, at the most, we were 10 people. So very small. So uh, the recipe for success in my case was I was able to deliver, over deliver, so I always delivered more than was expected from me. I always delivered on time and I deliver the results at a reasonable cost. So again, it's, it's not rocket science. It's just two things. It's, it's just these three things. Delivering amazing work, the best work that you 
know and that you can at, at the stage that you are, delivering it on time, keeping your promise and keeping your word, and, and charging the, the fair amount of uh, money that you should um, uh, do. And organically, for me, things have grown from that. But again, to enter, you need to knock at as many doors as you can. Some of them will be uh, closed. The worst thing that can happen is people say no, or people don't even reply. You just have to keep pushing. You have to keep pushing. You have to keep knocking. And uh, within time, you will be given the opportunities because if your resilience and if you are committed to the profession and to the design, and if you believe in the power and the transformation that design can bring, you will be very successful. I can promise you. You can come back to me and 30 years from now and say, no, no, after all, uh, I tried my best and I couldn't. I'm sure there's always uh, opportunities. There's always ways to, to, to keep pushing forward. So thank you for this um, positive approach, but also very hands-on approach, okay? Very, um, uh, without hiding the fact that uh, it's you keep trying, okay? And we always learn and we always try to um, improve. There are two questions, so I'm super happy to, to share them with you. The first one is um, um, uh, Munawar that is asking, uh, that is underlining the fact that there are a lot of, uh, there is a lot of competition in the market for designer jobs. And, um, the, the opportunity is to, to be different, to be relevant, to be yourself. Uh, what would you suggest uh, to, to balance between being relevant, be yourself, and being attractive for a market that is getting very busy, let's say, or very popular? Amazing question. Thank you so much for asking that question. Look, um, there's two, two approaches. Maybe there's more, but let, let's compare these two. So you can either knock at the door and ask for an opportunity or ask for work, ask for whatever other person can give to you. That's one possibility. The other possibility is to knock at the door and say, look, I have something for you. I've seen something I can help you with, and I'm here to give you something. So instead of going with this attitude, oh, I want something from you, you can have the other attitude, which is, I'm coming here and I have something for you. And if you think it's valuable, please take it. Because if you have that opportunity, people will be able to listen. So um, as a senior person that I am today, if someone knocks at my door, and I have many people knocking at my door, sending me emails, reaching out on LinkedIn, just telling me, hey, no, no, hey, can you give me a job? Hey, no, no, I need to pay my rent. Hey, no, no. So uh, you're trying to solve your problem. Chances are other people also have their problems. So you need to think about other people's problems and how you can be relevant. Because if you're only trying to solve your problem, you're not relevant to me. But if you come to me and say, hey, no, no, you know what? I can, I can be useful to you. I can um, do something for you. And by the way, obviously, there, there needs to be an exchange for that. But that cannot be the first way, the, the first thing that you approach people with. And again, try, not trying to sound like a broken record, design is a problem solving uh, tool. And we need to make sure that people understand that because that's, the, that's our way in, that's our, the, the way we can put our foot on the door to um, have people stop and listen to us and give us an opportunity and then um, be able to uh, progress in our careers. But uh, again, if you go just trying to, to reach out to someone to solve your problem, that may not uh, play very well. We are, I think, collecting some 
interesting and powerful ingredients here and there. Maybe it's my Italian DNA that speaks, always talks about food, but <laughs> um, one is this idea of asking for opportunities. The other one is, or asking for help, asking for support, network. On the other side is offer contribution. Uh, then this idea of being a problem solver, so position yourself and think about your uh, approach as a problem solver, uh, as a um, team person uh, that is not afraid of adversities. Uh, and I think that's the, there are a couple of elements that we have been through during this uh, conversation, but always talk about your approach as a uh, the only Portuguese in the room, okay? Meaning the only person that was coming from a different context in, uh, a, a, not, I won't say homogeneous, but it's at least a um, more, um, less diverse uh, situation. Uh, one of the questions that um, Saranya wrote was this idea of um, if you have any advice that you would give to students that are coming from different countries to Europe, since you have a global um, experience now, um, regarding this idea of career opportunity in foreign countries. Uh, what, what, what are, how would you uh, suggest people to approach to this challenge? Again, yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful question. Thank you very much for, for asking that. Look, um, again, you, you were talking about DNA, uh, the Italians, the Portuguese. We are also, it's, it's in my DNA, to travel the world, to have seen um, people went so. And let me tell you a story. So there was a, a, an historian in Portugal being asked, oh, you know, uh, we were this great uh, nation. We, we own half of the world. We went around the world. We were like astronauts. Of, at that time, we were such a powerful nation, such a powerful, such rich people. And then we lost everything. And now we're here, this poor country, nobody knows about us, uh, unless they're talking about football or wine. Uh, what happened to us? Uh, what happened? Well, why are we, why are we came up to this uh, situation? Uh, because we are the descendants of those uh, great uh, people. And um, the historian offered a very interesting point of view. He said, look, we, those people that uh, you're mentioning that went around the world, they went around the world, they made a, ver a better life for themselves, and they didn't care to come back. We are the descendants, not of those great people that you're mentioning, we are the descendants of the people that didn't have the courage to go anywhere. Now, if you have the courage to go somewhere, you are already having a competitive advantage to the people that you will encounter, let's say, in, if you're coming from uh, the Middle East and you're going to Sweden, you already have a competitive advantage because you have a perspective to the world that is important to companies and brands. I'll give you an example. The, the company that I worked for, we have uh, restaurants in all over the world. How can we make our restaurants and our offerings and our menus and our communication relevant all over the world if we don't understand the world, if we have not been uh, in other parts of the world, if we don't speak other languages. Speaking other languages other than English, it's an amazing uh, competitive advantage because we see the world in a way that people from those countries that you are trying to find your job don't have. Uh, and that's a big competitive advantage. Uh, so language does shape the way we see the world coming from a different um background, a different culture is a competitive advantage, use it because not everybody are willing to go out of their comfort zone. Um, so congratulations if you have that courage, please proceed with that. You will face many closed doors, many um, uncertainty, but you are on the right path because the world needs that. I would rather have someone from a different nationality and I'm very blessed because I'm today I'm working with people from Italy, from Spain, France, from uh, Netherlands, from uh, Malaysia, and that's the riches, and that's the the texture, and that's the 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 thing that companies need. So again, if you coming are coming from a, a different country, a different culture, 
use that to your advantage because uh, people need that. You just need to tell that story. You need to make sure that people understand that that is valuable because if you are not valuable to others, people will not value you. So you need to value yourself first and people will, they will pay you. They will pay you very well. Look, let, let me tell you, I, I'm, I have a very well paid um, job, but I didn't start it like that. Um, but what I bring to the table, being a Portuguese person that lived in Dubai, lived in Singapore, speak different languages, have spoken to people from different nationalities, um, plays a, a big role. And that's why I was hired. And maybe an Australian guy was not hired because he has a, a, a vision and a, a, an experience of the world that is very narrow. So use that. I, I hope it's uh, useful to you. Thank you very much. Super, super powerful and super inspiring. Um, there's an episode that came into my mind when you were uh, underlining the fact that differences are a plus uh, and we build on advantages, okay? We don't build on what we lack, we build on what we have. Um, but it's this sentence that um, uh, Harvey Milk, the LGBT first public official in the United States wrote uh, on the book that gave to his nephew um, when he was super young and he understood that his nephew uh, was um, one of the person that in his um, family at least or familiar relationship that was an LGBT person and he wrote down you and your differences are the medicine to the world even if the world doesn't know that it he or it needs them so this idea of we can cure with our differences, even if we cannot, we even haven't found the problem yet. Okay, so the designer with a different or with a diversity mindset is even more effective. We have another question, and I think we are almost there towards the end. So if uh, I encourage you guys and girls that are listening, um, if you have any other last minute question, this is the moment. Um, from the, the, the question I'm reading if you is, what is the biggest challenge you faced in the freelance world or in the design world? And how did you overcome it? The person that That's wrote this sentence is a product yeah. designer if it helps you to, to relate. So very interesting question. I was never asked that question, but I, I, I will try to answer it the, the best of my capabilities. The worst, we are our best allies and we are the, the worst enemies of ourselves. Uh, self doubt is the worst enemy, is the thing that uh, in, pre prevents us for, from going uh, further and faster. If we doubt ourselves, we are already um, sabotaging our career. And we need to keep trying. We, the, the, the faster we fail, the faster we learn, and the faster we'll reach where we need to be. And sometimes where we need to be, it's not where we, we think it's the best way. I've, I've never planned to go to Dubai. I never had the plan to, to have a, a, a career like I have. It, it, it happened because I, I, I worked for it, and I embraced the, the opportunities and I believed in myself. I believed everybody else will doubt you unless uh, you believe in yourself. Uh, you need to prove every, everybody else wrong. And that's the, the, probably the, the main uh, thing, theme of my life. I've been trying to prove everybody else is wrong. People that were saying that you cannot do it. I proved that I, coming from a very humble um background I was able to do it and I did it so don't think about try to put positive thoughts in your mind try to dream dream is the best thing that you can do because those are the things that will make you go where you need to go and sometimes uh, you end up in places that you never imagined and they will be amazing so being prepared to be surprised because life will surprise you in many ways. And please don't sabotage yourself. 
believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, nobody will. You need to tell that story to you first and you need to make sure that others believe in you. Um, otherwise, it's, it's going to be impossible to get anywhere. I hope uh, this is helpful. I, I'm sure there's other ways to address this question. This is my personal way. Uh, it's a very uh, intimate and uh, something that I probably never um, voiced in this way, but I hope it's helpful for you in, in any, any shape or form. But thank you for the question. It's, uh, it's very relevant for everybody. Questions are always more uh, interesting and challenging when they come like from different perspectives. So um, uh, thank you also for underlining the fact that um, we play a very powerful role in uh, making things happen. Now, when you said, I never planned this, but I dreamt this, but I attracted this, but I, I tried to deal with that. Um, so it's, it's, it's definitely um, a deep um, mix of uh, powerful elements that we are sharing tonight, at least for the people that are like me and you in <laughs> the evening uh, setting. You're right, Andrea. Look, uh, it's very uh, common for people to feel fragile, to feel powerless, to feel that they cannot influence, they feel that uh, they are at the mercy of everybody else's decision. But we have a lot of power, we have a lot of uh, um, influence, and um, we just need to take things we in our hands, we need to roll our sleeves and do it, because if we don't do it, nobody will. And... Um, that, that has been uh, helpful for me. Uh, I hope it's, it will be helpful for other people. Thank you very much for this. Um, I think um, if there are uh, if there is a last question from the audience, I'm happy to to share it with Nuno. Uh, otherwise, I will play my. Do you have a book, a movie, and a country you suggest us to go and why? This was not staged, so... <laughs> uh, I just recommended my uh, uh, my youngest uh, child. She's 18. She's studying uh, philosophy. And I just recommended her a book that I read recently. It's called Cultism. Let me check the, the author. Just a second. So... Francesca. Cultism is from... Lady, so the book is called Cultism, the Language of Fanatism, and uh, the, the author is Amanda Bontel. And it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, book. Again, it's it's tied to what I've mentioned about how language shapes our perspective to the world and how people were very clever to use language to influence and to drive people to do things that they would never be inclined to do. We have many examples of uh, uh, cults like uh, the gym and the fitness cult. You have... Um, People that were driven by uh, to through fanatisms uh, all over the world. So language is a very powerful tool, and I really like this book and I enjoy it. I'm going to read it again. Actually, I have it as an audio book because I, the attention span doesn't allow me to to read physical books anymore. But I really recommend this book. Uh, having said that, let me share with you my favorite um, Italian word. My favorite Italian word is uh, Cincera. And not many people know the origin of this word. So I, I would, I'm not going to tell you the origin of the word Cincera. I, I would let you discover it and be surprised about it and see if it uh, makes sense in your life. So it's a provocation. It's an invite for you to go and uh, find the meaning of the word Cincera. Uh, we have been through this um, very powerful journey, um, and I will recap briefly the islands that we touched, the um, uh, surfing waves we've been through, uh, before giving the opportunity to Cecilia to to 
celebrate the end of this um, hour and this connecting the dots. So we connected some dots starting from the idea that um, designers are problem solver uh, human beings with uh, meaningful problems that can be solved out there. And this opportunity of being curious, asking questions, talk to different industries and having a cross capability T-shaped uh, approach. Um, we shared you know, with you that the idea that being bored is okay, can be a super powerful tool for us to, to travel, to learn, to transform. Uh, that, was, that there are not a lot of secrets behind success, but one of that uh, approach and mindset is this idea of working hard, over and delivering, being on time, um, train your uh, and our attitude of being good at asking uh, and keep uh, pushing. Uh, the opportunities, I think there was this, the last wave is like the opportunities are there every time we don't we do not sabotage ourselves. Uh, and even if we don't plan, uh, we've, even if we don't plan, we can learn fast and uh, uh, if we learn to fail fast and to feel, the fragile aspect and language as a powerful opportunity and maybe this sincero element can be powerful for everyone. Um, thank you very much uh, for- Thank you, Andrea. With, thank you, everybody. Uh, us. Thank you for the questions that came from the audience that were very precious, that helped us and me at my first moderation, so hopefully it was good enough, uh, to to facilitate and to make this richer, powerful, and um, useful. Cecilia, yeah, yes. the stage is yours again. <laughs> yes, thanks, Andrea. Thanks, Nuno. For me, it was a really a pleasure to have uh, here you with us today. Uh, and I hope uh, our students enjoy the conversation. Um, and I hope to see Nuno soon in Milano, back in the Mos Academy, <laughs> because it was really a pleasure to have you here online. But of course, uh, for us, it's always a pleasure to remain connecting with our former student and uh, see what you are doing, what, how you are growing, uh, strolling around of the world. So, and I wish all the best to our students. Uh, uh, hoping that they enjoy the conversation and they will uh, take care and uh, keep in mind <laughs> what you share with us today. So thanks again and um, I wish you good evening and good luck for everything. Thank you very much. <laughs> you very much. I, I will um, surely fulfill my promise of visiting you in, uh, in Milan. I look forward for the first opportunity that I have. I will go there. Absolutely. Thank cool. you very much for the opportunity. Cool. So thanks, guys. I hope you enjoy the webinar. See you around in campus and have a nice evening to everybody. <laughs>